Hi, I'm Gail Jones. I'm a professor in STEM education, and it's my pleasure to introduce Emily Caton and Catherine Chestnut, two of our doctoral students. Our project is promoting STEM interests and careers through FAME, which is Families and Museums Exploring. We have three museum partners and a nationwide group of diverse advisors that are helping us with the project. Think back to when you were a kid. What did you like to do for fun? Who are you with? Family? Friends? Did you do any science activities? This is what our survey is promoting, family and science. These kids are from my area of Eastern North Carolina, an area where families and STEM careers are very important and could change the lives of these students economically. We're basing this research on a previous study that our team did in which we examined the STEM leisure interests of individuals <clears throat> from all 50 states. So we surveyed over 3,000 individuals and we found that for many of them, their interests began in childhood. For many of them, they had access to an adult or family member who also had interest in STEM. And we also found that of the individuals surveyed, over 90% were male and over 75% were, I'm sorry, over 90% were white and about 75% were male. And so when we look even further into this and we look at what, what kids believe about who does STEM, we gave this, these set of four photos to those kids you saw in Eastern North Carolina. We said, which of these people is a scientist? 90, over 95% said the white male. Uh, and the reasons they gave were a little bit shocking. Uh, but when we look at who really does STEM, and particularly who really does physics, this is our award-winning physics faculty on the top row here at NC State, a high school robotics club, and a board of directors for an engineering firm. We're still seeing this pattern of white males. This person in the middle, the chairman, makes six and a half million dollars a year. When we look at who does STEM out of school or out of work for leisure, you see the same pattern. You see white and male predominates in many of the STEM hobbies and leisure activities. We want to change that pattern. That's the goal of this project. We're going to work with families. We want to make it engaging. We're going to take a systems approach to changing this pattern. So we're, instead of just looking at, you know, for example, mentors or self-efficacy, we're going to look at all the variables collectively, both together and individually, to try to make a difference. We're going to build on the, on the work of Louise Archer, who has looked at science capital, which is not just the resources, materials, and tools, but it's also the relationships that kids have with significant people in their lives. We're going to use her work to help us design this program so that we can look at all the variables. We want science to be who we are and what we do for these families. We're gonna, and Louise Archer defines this exact saying as what she calls family habitus, so that we want these families to see science is something that they do, as well as who they are for both the youth that are in school and the families out of school. Our colleague, Myron Floyd, has done research to show that Hispanic and African American families spend leisure time differently than their white American counterparts. And often these activities are not STEM. We want to try to change that. We want STEM to be an inviting and fun and engaging activity. In our research that we're doing, we're going to look at these various variables, everything from self-efficacy to identity to career interests. We're going to try to really change these different variables for these youth and see if we can actually make a difference in their career interests. The project will start with providing families with resources at our area museums, sponsoring a community of learners where the families can come and be together, can enjoy doing science together, and then we want to measure and see whether we can actually change their career aspirations. We're starting with a nationwide survey to measure this idea of science capital and family habitus. Uh, and then we're going to use that data to help inform our local programs with families, where they will go to one of three museums. We will provide them not only with technology, but we're going to provide them with materials. So each time they go to an event, they'll go home with a set of activities. 
We're going to provide them with mentors. We will provide them with all of those various things that go into all of this work from transportation to food to fun. But at the bottom line, again, we want to make it something that all of these kids do together with their support system, be it a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, or a sibling. And in the end, we want to change it so that all of our youth think that science is something that we do and who we are. Thank you.